One of the most effective ways that a city can work to keep its businesses thriving is through effective long-term planning and by reaching out and actually communicating with our local businesses. With us today, we have Rita Trapp from the Hoisington Kegler Group. Rita Trapp is the project manager for the City of Maplewood's 2040 Comprehensive Plan. Rita is an associate with Hoisington Kegler Group and has 14 years of experience in municipal planning. Rita is routinely involved with zoning regulations, development, park system, and master planning and grant writing. Please join me in welcoming Rita. Well, thank you uh, for having me today. I'm excited to be here to talk about the comprehensive plan and where we are in the process. Just to make sure everybody's on the same page, I wanted to make sure that we all understood what a comprehensive plan is. Um, a comprehensive plan is a long-range document that really guides the city um, as it looks to the future. Uh, we try and guide development and redevelopment, but also talk about other topics uh, that are important. And on the next slide, I'll have those in just a second. Um, but we really try and plan for the future. It is, as most people are aware, that's something that every community within the metropolitan area has to do every 10 years. Um, but as a planner who works in many communities, we really try and focus on what uh, it can bring to the city as opposed to what we have to do as a result of Metropolitan uh, Council requirements. Um, it's really a great time for the city to get re-engaged with its citizenry, uh, plan for a vision, and try and figure out where we want to go in the future and how we get there. Just to give you an example, <laughs> these are the types of uh, uh, chapters that we will have in the comprehensive plan. So we'll talk about land use, which is the traditional way that folks think about comprehensive planning, but it goes well beyond that. Talked about transportation and utilities, um, and we will talk about uh, affordable housing and housing. Resiliency is something that uh, we can talk about in the comprehensive plan, but Maplewood really will talk about it differently than many communities. Uh, talking about energy, talking about local food access, and then also sustainability, because you have been a leader and will continue to be a leader in that area into the future. So this is an example of all the different topics that we will think about and talk about in the comprehensive planning process. Uh, just to give you a perspective, this is not a quick process. Uh, it takes generally 12 to 18 months. Uh, they are due to the Metropolitan Council in December of 2018. Um, but we have plenty of opportunities to discuss and engage with the public, and that's really the part that we're on right now. Uh, this timeline just kind of gives you a flavor of what we will be doing. The yellow bar shows where we are in October. We are just wrapping up, uh, really focusing on trying to engage in the community, being out in the community, talking, learning. Um, that's one of the best parts of my job is to be engaged and to learn all about a community, uh, figure out what people like, what they don't like, um, and try and then figure out how do we weave that into the vision for the future and help city staff and commissions and boards and the city council really figure out what are the steps we need in order to achieve that vision that's still 20 years out. Some examples of the community engagement that we've been involved with, uh, we've tried to be at community events, so a lot of the great events in the summertime, uh, we've had staff out there talking to folks and getting engaged, uh, we've met with the Rotary, we've met with the Business Council, um, and we've also met with some local community groups, uh, elders at, at different uh, faith communities, to try and really understand what's happening in the community. Uh, if you move on, one area that we've really been focusing on is what we're calling, it's called Social Pinpoint. It is a web-based interactive engagement tool. Uh, and as you can see, we've had over uh, 750, I think, users. That was just of, uh, late last week when I checked. Um, and the graph on the bottom shows how much we've had users come, the blue bar shows all the little spikes of people coming and visiting the site and providing input. And that, if you haven't checked it out, I listed. And on the business cards on your table, it lists. We're going to keep that open through the end of October, um, hoping to encourage folks to go review the site. It's fun. As you can see, people are spending about 18 minutes on the site just seeing what other people in the community have, have talked about. Um, and one thing that I've done, but I won't do here, but the notion of this is not just about people who live in the community. It's about people that work in Maplewood, recreate in Maplewood, visit, have faith, shop, drive through Maplewood. It's for everybody, not just the people that reside here. We're really trying to make a community that hits all of those buttons and serves everybody, whatever their interaction is with the city. Um, this is an example of all of the like comments, all of the, this is great. Um, kind of comments that we have. And you can see the examples of what we have. So people are talking about parks, they're talking about community events, they're talking about the heritage farm. They're really talking about a real variety of elements of the community uh, that they love. 
And then the next uh, bullet that I shot, those are the places where we find that we need work. There, everybody uh, is clear that there are things that could be improved for the future. Uh, so a lot of those discussions, again, are about parks and transportation, kind of those traditional elements. And we're looking for whatever those ideas may be. And so I encourage you to go out and take a peek at it. You can also, like today's thing, you can like and dislike things, which is helpful to really give people a picture uh, of where, where the important elements are that people are highlighting. The fact that we're actually doing analysis, I think I always fear when people see these kinds of things that they feel like they put their comments out there and then we just kind of look at them casually and then we ignore them. But we're actually analyzing them and that's one of the uh, great assets of this type of website is the fact that they're geographic based and so I can actually put markers on a map and underlay my land use planning, my trail planning, my road planning and really figure out where all these comments are. Um, so this is an example of the analysis, analysis that we're doing. We're actually taking where people say there are trail and sidewalk gaps comparing it to what we had planned in our 2015 parks plan and saying nope we didn't plan this, people are saying there's a gap here, or we did plan this, but now we hear that people really think it's important, so we should recognize the, fake, the fact that maybe this has a priority uh, as opposed to other elements that we could focus on. So this is some of the exciting stuff that we're doing. As I said, it closes at the end of October, um, so please get out there and share it with other folks and encourage them to participate, because there's another few weeks. So with that background, um, I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about overall demographics and trends and kind of the background very quickly about what we're looking at. Um, the Metropolitan Council is, rec uh, is planning that the city of Maplewood will continue to grow both in housing and employment. Uh, and the figures are provided at the bottom just to give you a picture of that. So our goal in our planning is to try and make sure that we're guiding land uses in areas, identifying where redevelopment could happen uh, so that we can actually accommodate that additional growth. Uh, and so this is important. There are regional economic uh, databases that we've looked at and they seem to indicate that what is being planned by Met Council to some degree is on par. We're kind of meeting what um, kind of the analysts, the retail business analysts are thinking. Um, so we think it's a realistic place to start. Um, it is interesting that Maplewood is kind of anticipated to grow more than neighboring communities. Um, and by neighboring communities, I'm really focusing on the communities except for St. Paul that kind of border. And Maplewood has a lot of them. Uh, and so that's something that's interesting to think about. If we move forward into uh, some of the trends, we started, we have a steering committee that is helping guide this process, but we also have the involvement of lots of boards and commissions. That's one of the things that's unique about Maplewood than some of the other cities that I'm working in is that the, all the different boards and commissions are very engaged in the process as well. Um, some of the trends that we've been considering is the changing in millennials and baby boomers and kind of what their housing needs are, what their housing desires are, their transportation desires. As I've also highlighted here, there's really an anticipated change in transportation. We've already seen that advent of Lyft and Uber, the idea of autonomous vehicles. That's going to drastically change um, how things go. We can't totally plan for that in the future. Somehow we have to plan for enough parking for all of us to have our cars now and the idea that maybe we won't need all of our cars in the future. Um, and that's an interesting place to be on trying to plan on both ends of the spectrum. Um, but these are some of the, the trends that we took into consideration as we move forward. Um, so some of the key opportunities in Maplewood that we're really thinking about, um, some of those opportunities are really shaping uh, what the future is for the Maplewood Mall area. I know there's a lot of interest, passion about that area, making sure that it's vibrant, um, and I know the mall has been planning in this vein as well. So we're really trying to figure out ways that we can support what they think would be a uh, appropriate as well as supporting the surrounding property owners. Although there is the mall, there's a lot of property around the mall as well, owned by many different individuals. So trying to figure out how we support that into the future, trying to support healthy St. John's as they move forward and really capture and really be that medical mecca uh, in this part of the Twin Cities. Uh, also looking at small redevelopments. Uh, we have a lot of commercial aging nodes all throughout the community given its structure. So we need to think about, well, what happens with those? How can we support reinvestment? Can we support putting additional housing in order to help support those? Really providing flexibility, and that's one of the elements that you'll see when I talk about some of our directions. 
Uh, we also have a lot of different multifamily and housing, uh, everything from single family to multifamily that really ranges in age. Uh, one of the maps we produced already has, takes a look at where is the housing in the future, or what is the housing and what is the age of housing. And it so ranges in Maplewood because everything was developed at different times. And we really are trying to figure out how do we support reinvestment, how do we support new investment, how do we help people stay in their homes. Those are all elements of housing uh, that we need to be conscious of. Um, obviously, it was mentioned 3M and trying to support their efforts into the future, um, so that was always a conscious effort. Um, and then the rush line and the gold line, which I'll talk a little bit about in a moment. The rush line it was mentioned um, by the mayor, uh, so I don't want to go too heavy on it, but it is an element that we're thinking about. Uh, it is proposed to go north-south through the community and really kind of guide some of the land use planning and the redevelopment planning that we have. Um, so this just gives you an example. If you haven't seen the map, it's great to see where it's going to go uh, through the Bruce Vento Trail, up around the hospital, the Maplewood Mall, uh, back over across 694 up to White Bear. So it's really an exciting element. Um, and there has been updates, the, the planning and when the timing is, as we said. We're looking out to 2040, so for us the timing is really important. When is it going to happen? How does that affect the lands uh, that are around those uh, stations? In addition to the rush line, uh, the gold line, as was mentioned, moves east-west um, through the community, um, and really the focus in Maplewood is around the 3M campus. But we have used that looking at broader land uses. Uh, and so also the time frame of this kind of opening in the mid-2020s, uh, so we are thinking about that. How does that look? How does that change? How can we do connections, pedestrian connections, both for rush line and gold line? Those are all elements that are important to us. Initial directions. So this kind of covers the initial directions just briefly. Um, and I want to reiterate, this is at the beginning of the planning process. Uh, these are not set in stone. These are things that we're just exploring with the steering committee, the planning commission, and the council. So expect that things will continue to evolve and change as we really have these in-depth discussions about what's appropriate for the community. But some of our initial directions is that the housing as it is today is appropriate moving forward. We're just going to support the land use as it is today. Um, we did make a change from industrial as a category to employment, and to me that's significant because it really sends a different message. It's the message of jobs and really supporting our business community. Um, so that's something that we have thought about and really trying to uh, really support within the community, and I have a map in just a second. And the last one is about increasing flexibility through mixed use, uh, and so that's something that we're exploring as well. Um, to the map, I just circled briefly those purple areas are kind of the employment areas. That's a change. In the past, we talked about them as commercial. Um, and they're still commercial, but they're really about employment, about supporting jobs, about supporting businesses. Um, and because it's Maplewood and its shape, I have a nice, uh, the next slide shows the south in two segments because it doesn't work in PowerPoint. Um, but I wanted to make sure you saw it, so that's why all the maps have this type of element to it. Before I talk about mixed use, it's important to give people a, a sense of density. I think that's one of the hardest things to talk about when we talk about density. We like, as planners, we like to throw out low and medium and high. What does that really mean? Uh, so I wanted to give you some examples of recent projects and just give you a sense of what it is. And, and having projects in Maplewood hopefully means you can feel like, oh, that's what that is. That feels right. That doesn't feel right. Uh, so these are some of these examples that you can see. And I just took the medium and high density. I think we all know what a single family uh, housing development is. It's a little bit harder when we talk about townhomes and apartments. One of the elements when we talk about mixed use and just character of the community, people have focused a lot about design. So just to give you a heads up, these are some of the elements that we think are important. Um, so things like making sure we're breaking up buildings, that we're having great elements that make you feel like they're interesting to the pedestrian. Some more examples of what we're looking for, of trying to make uh, buildings attractive. And that's one of the elements that we'll be focusing on, is trying to set the stage uh, so that we can make the places not only fit in the, the neighborhood that they're in, but just feel like they're places that people are drawn to and want to be at. So really briefly, future land use. Uh, as I said, there's three categories that we're proposing, um, and this is where that density number that I came in um, has to, to, to factor in. Uh, the fixed one, first one is like a mixed-use neighborhood, um, so that's really kind of trying to make neighborhood nodes, things that fit with the surrounding single-family neighborhoods. The, the bottom are some examples. We're looking at making sure it's more residential than commercial so that it kind of fits in the neighborhood, um, and then giving densities that are encouraging townhomes and apartments. 
Um, the places that are circled are kind of the areas where we're thinking about these. So these are taking those neighborhood nodes that we have at different intersections and making sure we can provide flexibility to property owners. So if they want to do something different, they can. Um, all the way down uh, to the far southern end of the city. Then the next category is really talking about the Gladstone area. It's mixed use, high density. It's taking what the Gladstone plan was originally envisioned, hopefully you're aware of that, kind of continuing on the path um, that is being already occurring at Frost and English and supporting it into the future. Given the fact that there is the rush line, we just wanna make sure that we capture that um, into the future. Um, so those of you that are familiar with the Gladstone neighborhood, hopefully you have an idea of what's there today and what we're looking at in the future. Uh, and really the development that we're focused on in in that is similar to what was already planned for. So the densities are a little bit higher and we're going to those in the future of trying to just encourage more of that uh, to continue. So the last category that's new and different is a mixed use community. And this is to try and really provide flexibility for those regional areas, the areas that are more heavily commercial, that feel like they could take more density of housing and we could really create walkable places where there's a great interaction between the commercial and uh, the residential. This is really looked at uh, around the Maplewood Mall area. Again, the notion of trying to provide more flexibility so that we don't always have all of our land uses separated into little boxes and categories. Uh, and so this is around the Maplewood Mall area, uh, as well as Rush Line at Highway 36. Given the fact that that's a major roadway, there's a little bit more opportunity to do something more intense along Highway 36. Uh, and then also at the Gold Line around uh, Century. So we move to the maps. So up at the Maplewood Mall, Highway 36, around the 3M campus area. I just wanted to highlight briefly some of the economic development goals. Again, these are kind of a work in progress, but they're tr trying to, re to emphasize some of the elements that we talked about. Uh, the idea of really supporting the St. John's Health East Campus, 3M, our neighborhood mixed use nodes, really trying to help our businesses with employment and labor. Um, so those are kind of where our starting points are, and we're gonna continue to work with the Housing and Economic Development Commission, the Planning Commission, uh, as well as the City Council on, on working on what these goals, policies, and kind of what our actions are going to be. I know that Mindy uh, will be talking about the business retention and expansion, and I'm ahead of her, so I'm just going to highlight briefly some of the elements uh, that we thought were important to move forward uh, from that plan. And that really has to do with uh, continuing the, the Maplewood Business Council meetings and taking those as an opportunity to start building those relationships with the schools, building relationships with around the transit, really supporting transit investment, uh, and really continuing on the elements that the city has already started about really reaching out to the business community uh, and being a partner and trying to figure out how do we support the business community better. So we, are, we will be and have used the business retention uh, and expansion plan as kind of an element and as a starting point uh, for looking at economic development in the community as we move forward. So as I said, this is an introduction uh, obviously, it's going to be a thick document that has lots of detail and information. We're just writing chapters right now um, and elements and trying to pull everything together. So those draft elements will be going to the steering committee in November, the planning commission in December, and the council in January. So there's plenty of opportunity for these things to still be more, to be modified, really fit the community. So as you have input, we appreciate that. I would encourage you to participate. Um, on the next slide, I think I reiterated social pinpoint in case you didn't uh, hear that message when I started. Um, really encourage you to go and take a look and just see what people are saying in the community and be familiar uh, with where people think things are important. But thanks for the time. Thank you.